Before we work some problems, I wanted to show you a couple things. This is a bomb calorimeter. A bomb calorimeter is a little bit fancier than our coffee cup ones, for sure. Um, but this is like what you would use in a 3000 level phys physical chemistry class. It's a very big container of water and then inside it has a compartment where you can burn a fuel. And when you burn it, of course, the water warms up. It has a built-in stirrer and of course a thermometer um, and a way to, to get the food started to, to burn. And notice I just said food. When I did this in junior year of college, um, we were told to go get some food out of the vending machine and we chose a cookie and we kind of smushed it up and made it into a pellet and set it up like this. And by measuring the temperature change of the water, we could determine the change in enthalpy, how much energy was given off by burning that cookie, which is the same as if it had been burned by your body, which is um, very interesting. Another thing I wanted to kind of point out here is that um, the use of this term and, and the terms that we use, for, the words that we use for it, so technically it's the change in enthalpy or a reaction, but it's very common to call it heat of reaction. the heat of the reaction. And it, it's called that even if the reaction is endothermic. The endotherm, um, an, a positive delta H is a heat of reaction even though heat is being absorbed. So I say this a lot and I wanna make sure that you're following me. Okay, and this next table is um, a very useful one and not just because I asked test qu questions straight off of it, um, it will help you with a lot of problems and keep you from having to do a lot of math or check your answers if you just know the relationships here. And so for this table, I always start with an exothermic reaction. So I'm going to put exothermic here. Most reactions are exothermic. If the reaction is exothermic, it's giving off heat. So the water will warm. And I think that's the part that people kind of get. Let's look at the signs of everything. If the water's warming, is the Q for the water positive or negative? It's receiving heat, so it's positive. So the heat of the reaction, this is for the reaction, is going to be a negative number. These will be the same number, opposite sign, whatever they are. Whatever they are. So this is how people usually think about it, the water um, heating, and that's what, what it would be if the reaction is happening with a Q this way. And actually it would be the delta H for the reaction and the Q for the water. But um, let's consider if it's going the other way. So if the substance if the substances are taking in and absorbing heat, that's what endothermic means. And in that case, the heat of the reaction is positive and the Q for the water is negative. The water is losing heat. And so what will happen to the water? It will cool. So notice that if you remember the top one, then you can get the other one because everything is opposite. For some reason, uh, people get really bothered when their water cools in the lab. I think in the experiment this week, most people have an unknown where the water will cool, not everybody. And sometimes they think something's wrong because well, water shouldn't cool, there's a reaction taking place. But it just depends on the reaction, if it's endothermic or exothermic. Okay, so let's practice with our equations.